This is not a particularly difficult fight. It's actually quite enjoyable. It has great music too. Oh, it's going to be a long It's easy to dodge these fans. Uh, that is to say, if uh, she doesn't do that at the same time. <laughs> Shit. Oh well, I'm good. The DPS need to be on those and kill them very quickly. Understand. It feeds on my spite, on my suffering. Must be her power. Come forth, shades of the dead. Curse my name, strike my body. Fill my soul with the blackest malice. Now the, uh, the shades of her past are after her. Text is going by a little too quick for me to read, but you guys are welcome to read, of course. Setsu's memory has come to her aid. Look at that beautiful scenery. I'm gonna stop talking, actually. Because this song is awesome.
Easily one of the prettiest, most enjoyable fights in this game. I love that fight. This from the scenery to the music, everything about it. You really must learn to finish the job. Tis true that a gaudy mirror and a handful of crystals make for a feeble summoning. But even the weakest icon is a god of sorts. A threat that must be put down. are the sworn enemies of the Empire. I merely did my duty as an Imperial officer. Will you surrender to anger then? Slay an anointed emissary to avenge a fallen foe? Ha! You cannot, of course! 
To do so would burn the bridges we have labored so hard to build. I'm pretty sure you've done that already. Oh, but I'm forgetting. They're already ash. This doorman woman has seen to that. The Empire cannot ally itself with any nation that refuses to renounce summoning. I believe I was most clear on that point. <laughs> it should have been mine. The power he bestowed upon her. I should have been the one to govern Dorma. I would have repaid his faith. No one alive loves him more than I! Instead, this harlot betrayed his trust. Useless piece of filth! Worthless whore! Thank you, dear brother, for this precious gift. Vengeance. These people, our people, they ignore the corruption which festers beneath the surface. Cast aside that which is dirty and broken. Speak not of things which would disrupt their dreary little lives. Like you, Asahi. Always pretending not to see. You were the first. The first I swore to kill. You should feel honored, dear brother. I saved the last of my strength just for you. What's the matter? The Witch of Dorma will soon be dead. Man, this is a tough one. Gosetsu will mourn you. He will mourn to you, perhaps. I wonder, was the fruit as sweet as he remembered?
Adios. I am at your disposal. Asai, you were born of Doma. Yes? Yes, my lord. I am honored that you would remember me. How may I serve? You are hereby appointed ambassador plenipotentiary and empowered to speak with the voice of the Emperor. Return to your native land of Doma and announce your intention to sue for peace. For peace? Once negotiations are underway, you are to locate the acting Viceroy. She lives? Uh, that is to say, I will, my lord. When you have found her, you will initiate a ritual to call forth an icon. I will instruct you in the necessary steps. Yotsuyu's faith is unreliable. But as a child raised to believe in the Kami, she will serve as a vessel for one of the Kojin's gods. She need only wish it to be so. The power will seem a gift, but the Icon's essence will consume her. She will be no more than a husk, a slave to whim and desire. My lord, ever since the day you saw fit to save my miserable life, I have dreamed of repaying your benevolence. Upon my honor, I swear to devote myself wholly to your service. All that you command will be done, no matter the cost. But... but... I fear the subtleties of your plan yet elude me. From the reports I have heard, the champion who aids the Dolmen Resistance would make short work of a single icon. The icon is merely a message. The pacifist teachings of the popularis spread through this city like a plague. And I would remind the people of the threat we face. You will be my chosen agent. The hand which tolls the warning bell. The salvation of this world will not be won through the signing of treaties. Your chosen agent. I will not fail you, my lord. And well, he didn't. Not that it matters much to him now. My... My... Master... Lord... Xenos... He will come for you. <laughs> you have prevailed, I see. Oh, go set Sue. She is gone. Wherefore did the Kami spare us only to inflict this pain?
Death shall not want for company this day. You spared us a worse disaster, but I fear our fledgling peace with the Empire was beyond saving. Lord Hien! Maxima, is it not? I assumed you long fled. I entertain thoughts of escape even now. But our negotiations have yet to reach a satisfying conclusion. The Ambassador insisted that the summoning spelled an end to our mission here. But it seemed to me there was more to the tale. Xenos was behind this plot. I have heard tell of this power you wield. And in your vision, you witnessed Lord Xenos giving these orders. How can that be? Xenos is dead. He took his own life after the battle in Alamigo. I saw his body with my own eyes. Forgive me, but Lord Xenos is very much alive. He granted our party an audience prior to our departure. That he was gravely wounded is certain, but his recovery appeared to be proceeding apace. I'm afraid I share Lord Hien's confusion. The man's death was confirmed and his remains interred. These are matters of public record. Hmm. I have no doubt you believe what you say. But what then is the explanation? That an imposter has infiltrated the innermost circle of the Imperial Court? The idea is inconceivable, absurd. But worthy of investigation nonetheless. Our movement can ill afford to have a highly placed pretender undermining our efforts. Your efforts may yet bear fruit. Tell me, what is to become of our prisoner exchange? Though we have already taken custody of our conscripts, we have yet to release your Imperial comrades. Do you still intend to collect them? Ah, uh, uh, yes. As the late ambassador's second in command, it falls to me to speak on the Empire's behalf. And I'm happy to confirm our intent to proceed according to the original agreement. Then let us be about it. It would be a pity to abandon such a promising beginning. Indeed. You have my thanks, Lord Hien. As soon as our people are secure aboard our airship, we shall depart straightways for Garlemald. Tread lightly, Pylos. I sense treachery awaits you there. Might I accompany you to the capital? Alphano, have you gone mad? Imposter or no, if Xenos was instructing Asahi on the finer points of ritual summoning, then experience tells us there is an Asian waiting in the wings. Without our knowledge and expertise, our new friends will be hard pressed to contend with a foe for whom death is but a minor inconvenience. They need our help. Were you indeed willing to share your knowledge of this enemy, we would not shun your counsel. You truly mean to do this? In full knowledge of the danger? I have seen the Warrior of Light risk her life on countless occasions. Next to her, I'm scarce more than a distraction on the battlefield. But in the meeting room or the audience chamber, there I can make a difference. I can strike bargains, forge ties, and change minds. And where better to do these things than in the home of our old enemy? I believe in you, Alphano. Tis not for me to stop you, but I would have you consider an alternative arrangement. Rather than braving the Empire as a simple traveler, go forth as an emissary of Dorma. Such a position should offer you some measure of protection. Go then. You've obviously made up your mind. Just try not to do anything reckless, all right? I shall be on my best behavior. Farewell, my friends.
Well, even if I saw he was a conniving little shit, Maxima seems to have a good head on his shoulders. He didn't really seem on board with Asahi's ploy anyway. Well, to say that the tone shifted from uh, extremely sad to extremely upbeat in a hurry is an understatement, but that is how it goes, isn't it? Gosetsu dragged himself here from his sickbed only to be greeted by the sight of Yotsuyu's corpse. I had not the words to comfort him. Ah, Halfano, you impulsive fool. I thought about trying to talk him out of it, but I know what I uh, but I know what I would say if the roles were reversed. Stubbornness is something of a family trait. I knew Asahi was planning some manner of treachery, but a summoning. Thank the Kami you were here, my friend. None of us would have escaped Yotsuyu's vengeance had you not intervened. She was a pawn, I, but she still had a choice, and she chose to submit to the Ambassador's plan. It is little wonder Gosetsu departed in silence. I gather he left the same way he came, alone aboard a rowing boat. As for the conscripts, most made it to the Sekibune before the battle began in earnest, but the vessel yet waits on the riverbank for those who did not flee in time. Then I suggest we put this doleful place behind us and make for the Enclave together. It would be a shame to miss the joyous reunion. In this moment. Thank you for helping it come to pass. There you are. Gosetsu, your hair. My friend, what have you done? An old man who cannot raise his blade has no place in the service of a young lord. Thus did I decide to devote my remaining days to pilgrimage. I will walk this land, offering prayers of repose for all the souls who left this life in suffering. All of them?
Safe travels, Gosetsu. <laughs> A fulsome farewell makes for an enjoyable journey. Scarcely have we said our goodbyes to Alphano, and you leave us too. <sighs> but, tis well that my companions find their own way forward. I must endeavor to do the same. I have faith that you will find the best path for Dorma without me, my lord. Pray forgive me this last act of selfishness, and grant me your blessing. You have earned it a thousand times over. Go in peace, my friend. I shall make of Doma a land where children laugh, and none need live in fear. There is no better way to honor those who went before. And with that, I take my leave. Ah, our party is that much smaller now, isn't it? It'll be far too quiet without Gosetsu around. I wonder if I'll ever see him again. Ah, oh, speaking of reunions, have you spoken with Ihanashi? It turns out his father was among the returning conscripts. He is right over here, isn't he? Thank the comma you spotted that crack plank. That ship ended up bringing my father home. And the captain said... Well, let's just say I'm not a pirate anymore. I'm going to live in Doma with my father. We're free! Ah, that's great. Gosetsu relinquished his duties with a grace befitting a samurai lord. I only hope that I can fill the void which he has left behind. You'll do it tenfold, Yugiri. Ah, Gosetsu. Fair journey to you, my friend. A bittersweet occasion. But there is yet ample cause to be grateful. Pray join me in the Kienkan. I would thank you properly. With all that out of the way, Doma should be able to look forward to a period of relative calm. As for us... Well, we have an intriguing story to tell everyone back at the Rising Stones. We sure do. Lord Hien trained under Gosetsu from the day he was old enough to hold a sword. Though he smiled through all the farewells, none will fear his absence more keenly. No, I imagine not. But he has to find his own way. Our brothers and sisters are returned to us. And the dream of Doma's restoration is that much closer to being realized. It is a day that will live long in memory, and one that would never have dawned without the courageous actions of the Scions. On behalf of Doma and her people, we give you our deepest thanks. Lest you think me complacent, I assure you, I have not forgotten the dark cloud on the horizon. That Xenos lives is a source of grave concern, mayhap the gravest, yet there is little to be done but wait for Alphano to send word. Until then, I plan to devote myself to fulfilling the promise I made to Gosetsu, by building a nation in which none need to live in fear. <sighs> I confess I miss him already, but the thought that he has at last found some peace goes some way to softening the blow. I wonder... Did you ever stop to ask yourself why he showed Yotsuyu such kindness? 
I believe the answer lies in his in past tragedy, specifically the death of his wife and daughter during the invasion. Though he hid it well, they were never far from his thoughts. And in Yotsuyu's childlike mien, I believe he saw not a fallen tyrant, but the little girl who was lost to him. After the loss of his family, Gosetsu devoted himself wholly to the service of his country. He suffered any hardship, strove beyond the limits of endurance without hesitation or complaint. Though Suyu could never truly replace his daughter, I had hoped that with her at his side he might live out the remainder of his days in relative contentment. Would that the Kami had been so minded. Even now I labor to discern any meaning in Yotsuyu's fate. To deliver her from certain death with no memory of her sins, only to leave her at the mercy of her stepbrother? Can that truly have been their will? That I cannot tell you. The will of the Kami is not for us to know. But what I do know is that for a brief moment, a girl known as Suyu lived among us. And that she brought with her a whisper of respite for a grieving heart. Got a little more to do. Doma owes you a great debt, my friend. Thanks to you, we have everything we need to prosper. You and Alice must promise to visit us again soon, and Alfino too, when he returns from the Empire. Know that my thoughts go with him. However far his pilgrimage may take him, we have not seen the last of Gotsetsu. Of that I am certain. I think it's time we were going, don't you? We've done all we can here, and we have a lot to report. But before we head back to the Rising Stones, let's call in at Ralga's Reach. We should be the ones to tell Lisa about Xenos. After everything we went through together, we owe her that. That's a good point. To Ralga's Reach, then. They've been quiet since their treachery in the throne room, but the Kalyana are a problem we'll need to solve at some point. Don't tell me. Things are gonna happen with them now. I honestly don't remember. Foxy, Alice, you're back. Hmm? No Alphino. It's good to see you, Lise. As for my headstrong brother, he's off on what will almost certainly turn out to be a once in a lifetime trip to Garlemald. It's a long story, but we have evidence that Xenos might still be alive. What? But that's... If this is a joke, God, this had better be a joke. Oh, I wish. Look, I know what I saw, right? We all saw it. And here you are saying he's alive and well and living the high life back in Garlemald? I know how ludicrous this sounds. I'm still having difficulty believing it myself. But while I might doubt the word of an Imperial Envoy, I'm inclined to trust Foxy's. She saw the Crown Prince through the Echo, in a meeting that could have only taken place in the recent past. It was him. It was Xenos. No, it must have been, I don't know, some kind of really convincing imposter. Xenos is dead. He had a great big hole in his neck. We buried him. Aye, and someone went to the trouble of desecrating the bastard's grave, remember? Thal's gilded halls, whatever you talking whatever are you talking about? Oh, it's Thancred. Thancred? What brings you to the Reach? Alfino had me lending a hand at the Saltery, keeping an eye on the rebuilding work and so on, just until operations were up and running. And now that they are, I imagine I might look in on you before, my wending, or before wending my weary way back to headquarters. Forgive me if I misheard, but is there some suggestion the late Crown Prince could have gotten better? If so, might I suggest a quick look inside his coffin as our first order of business? Ugh. 
As much as I hated the man, it doesn't feel right to finding his grave. But if it will put this rumor to rest, I suppose we have to. And when there are no curious eyes about, if we can manage it. Xenos is buried up at Bloodhow in the locks. His grave was set apart from the others and left unmarked so as not to upset the locals. And it shouldn't be too hard to find. Nago, you're in charge until I get back. Let's go grave robbing. You'll find Xenos' grave up on the Bloodhow, burial ground of the locks. The stone isn't marked, but it's set apart from the others, so it should be obvious enough which one you're after. Bloodhow. Jesus, what a long flight that's gonna be. Most of the graves are grouped together, but they managed to find a lonely spot for Xenos, didn't they? <laughs> it's more than he deserves. Also, I wouldn't call that unmarked, but eh. My money is on writhing snakes, possibly spiders. Let's prize it open and see what comes out. Oh, thank Rid. <laughs> Don't jinx it. This is it. Gods, he'd better be in there. Someone scrolled all over the stone a while ago, but I had it scrubbed off and thought no more of it. So no one thought to check if the coffin was still occupied. Well then, we are presented with but one course of action. And we had best be sure we are not observed in the doing of it. Shall we begin? Oh dear. We seem to be missing a corpse. Well, it must be somewhere. I only hope it isn't walking around. Who could that have been? If there's no corpse, then are we to conclude the rumors are true? Not necessarily. We might still be dealing with a doppelganger of some kind. An agent could have been sent to dispose of the body in a bid to lend credence to the tale of Xenos' resurrection. More and more, however, I find myself siding with Alphino's theory of Asian possession. Speaking from experience, I can tell you that they have no qualms about taking a living host, let alone a dead one. They're saying an Asian is walking around in Xenos' body. It seems a distinct possibility. Once I put this grave back the way we found it, I shall pay a visit to the people responsible for interring the Crown Prince. Before leaping to any conclusions, I want to know for sure if a body was ever buried here, and how certain we are that Xenos was properly dead. If he wasn't, that was some trick. He as good as cut his own head off. Anyway, Relbon needs to hear about this. If you find anything out, send word to me at Relga's Reach. Huh. <sighs> I don't know why I'm surprised. With matters settling down in Doma, we would do another crisis. Shall we make for the Rising Stones, then? It's, time we sh it's past time we share these developments with the others. Oh, well, they were good enough to bring us back. And hey, everybody's here. Elion, let's speak with you first. I know Grandfather and Home may have yet to discuss it, but with the liberation of Doma, it is surely only a matter of time before the refugees decide to return to the Far East, no? Eh, he's not going to have his companion anymore, is he? We gathered what scraps of intelligence we could, myself from within Eorzea and Alphino from his Far East resources, but there's a limit to what a bloke can learn about the Empire from outside its borders. Still, I'd never think to invite myself aboard an Imperial bloody airship. T'was impulsive, 
Reckless? You gotta admire the lad's style. Yeah, assuming he doesn't get him killed. Another mission fraught with danger, yet here I am still. Quiet moments such as this, spent in carefree conversation with comrades, I have grown to cherish most. Those of us who were afraid have who are afield have finally returned. Full glad am I to have everyone back. The place has been too quiet. Yeah, last time we were here it was pretty empty inside. Oh, Clements, are you still having issues? I hope Isildur can find someone to keep him company. With our missions, we can never linger very long. Seeing Home going about his duties with a smile lifts my heart even as it brings a tear to my eye. Glad though I am for his nation's liberation, I shall be saddened to see him go. I know I need to give Isildur my un undivided attention, but these waves of brotherly love make my mind drift to naughty places. Focus, Aenor. Focus. Alright, she's the pervy one. That's right, because she's the bard. Of course she is. Ugh. Tut seem Master Alphino has placed himself squarely in the path of danger. As a fellow scion, I shall render whatever aid I can to ensure his safe return. Though he is but half the size of my courageous brother, Twould seem Alphino's bravery looms twice as large. Even Hori might hesitate before embarking alone into the heart of the Empire. I think any of us would, really. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. But I've got plot armor. While I was waiting for you to arrive, I spoke with Urianji over Link Pearl and gave him a full report. Yashtola is on her way and should be here any- ah! Alice, Foxy, tis good to see you safe and well. What news have you from the east? Disturbing developments indeed. Given all that we know, I too would conclude that an Asian now inhabits Xenos's body. A doppelganger might fool the Crown Prince's subordinates, but Foxy? Nay, Alphino had the right of it. One that his wisdom extended to the question of his own safety. Capable though he has become, he ventures alone into the enemy's stronghold, and the shadowy web of the Paragons like is not. When it comes to making rash decisions, I'm hardly in a position to criticize, but... I'm worried. I just wish there was something I could do for him besides pray. Stupid Alphino, making us worry. We cannot suffer icons to exist. Was I not clear on this point? More than clear. The icon in question was summarily dispatched by the Warrior of Light. The summoner is dead, and the rite beyond repeating. Everything proceeded according to plan, every party behaving exactly as required. My methods may seem extreme, but there is no cause for concern. I work only to ensure the salvation of this star. Hmm? What are you doing fiddling with that thing? I asked you a question, soldier. What 
are you? Have you lost your mind? I have lost many things, but my mind is yet my own. There upon the stage I stood, prepared to take my final bow, only to find that the finale was but an intermission. Shall I use this chance to repent for my sins? Embrace goodness and mediocrity? Nay, I think not. While the one I yearn to face yet lives, the hunt must go on. Oh dear, what could that be about? Alphina will have need of all his wits if he is to survive his visit to Garlemald. We know precious little about life in the Imperial capital. I'm sure he will be just fine. One more quest to do for this video. It's been an eventful few days, hasn't it? But I suppose all we can do now is wait for word from Alphino. Huh. I don't recall the last time I had nothing pressed to be getting on with. We should probably make the most of it. Shall I put on some tea? Tea would be lovely. You may regale me with the tale of your adventures in the Far East, and of your encounter with this new primal especially. I'll put the kettle on then. That table looks free if you'd like to take a seat. I'll take care of the tea. You can claim us a table. It is pronounced Sukuyomi, correct? A figure from Far Eastern mythology, no doubt. She was a sight to behold, for sure. Upon sitting at the table, several cutscenes will play in sequence. Well, we have plenty of time. Interesting. So this Sukuyomi was summoned in much the same manner as Susano be the medium of a sacred relic. That's right. They believe their gods, or kami, res reside in physical objects. Given the danger they represent, it may behoove us to begin a catalogue of such relics. But if we are to contain the threat, we will require a better understanding of the summoning method itself. I believe I shall pay a visit to Doma and learn what I can on the subject. A fine idea. And I know for a fact that our friends in Doma would be grateful for any information which could help to prevent further summoning in the region. I will pen you a letter of introduction. Lord Hien will well wish to uh, will wish to welcome our resident expert on etherology. Greetings. Could it be that I'm in time for tea? It certainly looks that way. Come on, sit down and tell us how your investigations went. After you left, I went about questioning Bloodhouse gravekeepers. They all told me much the same story. Once Lise and her officers had confirmed Zenos dead, his corpse was interned under strict supervision. There seems little reason to doubt their testimony on that point, but when I mentioned the defacement of Zenos' grave, accounts grew rather more vague. None reported having seen any suspicious persons in the vicinity, and all assumed the act to have been perpetrated by a vengeful Alamegan. Crucially, however, I was able to confirm that when the offending scroll was removed as per Lisa's instruction, no one involved thought to check the contents of the coffin. By that stage, tis likely the corpse was already missing. Assuming Xenos has not, in fact, risen from the dead, we are left with two possibilities. Either the body was disposed of to lend credence to the claims of an extremely committed imposter, or an Asian has taken up residence within it. If Asahi was as fervent a devotee as you believe, he would not have been fooled by an impersonation, however committed. We must assume that we are dealing with an Asian and proceed accordingly. Agreed. 
The question is, how many more such monsters are waiting for Alphino and Garlemald? Their presence was his chief concern, for, his chief reason for going. He understood the risks. I only hope he did not underestimate the extent of the infestation. Master Elfino, we are making good speed towards our destination, is Artemis. Nay, tis just I can see not from my cabin and was curious to know the land over which we flew. Ah, I'm afraid our military craft are built with little thought for such niceties. I am happy to indulge your curiosity, however. We are currently passing over the burn on the western edge of Othard. Even with the benefit of a porthole, your gaze would have been greeted with naught but moms upon moms of lifeless earth. I have read something of the burn. It was described as a desolate wasteland, bled dry of every last drop of ether. Aye, it is believed that a succession of icon summonings was responsible. When Emperor Solus first came to Othard and beheld this blight, he, he is said to have reeled at the scale of the devastation. He declared icons a threat to our very star's existence and issued an empire-wide decree ordering the eradication of all such entities. Uh, report! We're under attack, sir. Magitek armor. No visible designation. Magitek? But who? Uh. All cannons, return fire. Damage report. The main reactor's been hit. Helm unresponsive. We're going down, sir. Damn it, they knew exactly where to hit us. All hands brace for impact. Glad to have you back, Master Alphino. We've landed in one piece, more or less. But the air filtration system is damaged and the ship is filling with smoke. We must gather the survivors and get out while we still can. Aye. Aye. Oh. Well, what's this now? Why, in this battle, we will fight as Alphano. Keep as still as you can. Master Alphano, might I ask you to search for survivors? I will see to our injured helmsman. I'll take this opportunity to look at our spells. We have Ruin 3, Physic, which is a heal, Tri Shackle, and Starstorm, a limit break. Let's find some survivors then. Maybe toward the ship. No? Ah. Break the wreckage. My thanks. I don't think I would have made it. Yes, you very likely saved his life. The question of who would try to take it remains, however. Put these last few out of their misery. The prince wishes none left alive. The prince? 
They've come not to parley, I fear. Ready your weapons. Oh yeah, did I mention this is not easy? Let's stand with the carbuncle. It grants us shining moonlight. We increase our damage given and reduce our damage taken. Confound it! Not here. Not like this. What? Who in the Emperor's name? Enemies of our enemies, introductions can wait. You are common a crisis, Master Alphano. Let us finish this then. Ah, but who is this jacketed bass a uh, badass before us? He's got some familiar tricks, that's for sure. Boy, the Emperor, that man is a fiend! Deploy your strengths! Ugh, a child's trick. Probably should have done it in the middle. My thanks, boy.
My thanks. Your intervention proved most timely. Well, well. I did not think to meet an Eorzean in this place, let alone a Scion. You know of me, sir. I have some small history with your order. But I would speak of the present. Know you your assailants, and the severity of your predicament? The soldiers bore the insignia of the Emperor's personal guard. And I could venture a guess as to their motive. But you, have, you yet have us at, an, at a disadvantage, sir. Will you not tell us who you are? Our names are not yours for the asking. And as for, their, as for our purpose, let this be our answer. An Asian mask. The face of our prey. We must away before more arrive. Come or stay. W uh, come with us or stay, but make your choice now. Even should we manage the long trek out of the burn and secure a passage to the capital, you would no doubt be greeted by the Emperor's guard. Indeed. We accept your gracious, your gracious offer, uh... Shadowhunter will suffice for the present. Come. Man's no joke. Ugh, this is intolerable. But as much as I wish it were otherwise, there is nothing we can do for Alphano but pray for his success. Well, that is not entirely true. While your brother journeys to Garlemald from the east, I could make my way there from Alamigo and find out what there is to be learned in the Empire's western provinces. Then I'm coming with you. I can't very well sit here sipping tea if there's action to be taken. Forgive me, Alice, but the provinces are hostile territory, and stealth is all important. It is safer that I go alone. I can sneak well enough when the situation demands it. Don't patronize me. We should leave this to Thancred. Not you too. I understand your frustration, Alice, but Foxy has the right of it. We must defer to Thancred's expertise in this matter. If I was a, a ninja, I might go with him, or offer to go with him. <sighs> Fine, just promise you'll be careful. Well, I had best put on my skulking boots. There'll be no room for mistakes once I've crossed the border from Alamigo. Alice and her brother bicker as all siblings do, but she worries for him nonetheless. It would be a kindness if you were to visit from time to time and distract her from her cares. I wouldn't leave Alice to mope. It seems that praying is to be the extent of my contribution after all. But I will stay behind as I have been bid. We all have our talents. Mine just happened to evolve a silver tongue and soft souls. I promise to send word the moment I learn aught of consequence. 
See that you notify me too. I mean to depart for Doma as soon as I find a suitable East Aldenard vessel to bear me thither, but I shall return if I am needed. Be sure to drop in whenever you're next in the area, Foxy. With any luck, I'll have a painfully detailed report from Alphano to share. Sounds good to me. And we've learned the Ponder emote. All right. That is going to do it for this episode. We have gone through quite a bit. Um, I know I didn't do an outro for the last episode. I didn't realize how ridiculously long this is going to go on. So forgive me for that. But this is indeed where we're going to leave off for now. We are winding down to the end of Stormblood proper. We only have, I believe, two sets of patch quests to go after this. And then we go on to Shadowbringers. So, in the next one, I will continue the main story quest as we wind down to the end and a new beginning. Until then, my name is Foxy Games. You all take care of yourselves. Bye.